Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. I am going to talk about products from FabFitFun that I am currently using. So let's just dive right in. So this one is the Shawnee Darden Daily Cleansing Serum. This is very simple packaging, kind of trendy actually a little bit, the gray color and everything, and very modern looking. Shawnee Darden, you can get this at Sephora. It has like four and a half stars on the Sephora site, so it's a pretty well-loved cleanser. I do like it. It's very light. They call it a cleansing serum, but I think that's just to be a little bit fancy. It's kind of like a runnier gel cleanser and it is very nice to use. It's very gentle on the skin. For reference, I have dry skin. As far as the cleanser goes, it's not anything crazy amazing to write home about, especially for the $44 price tag on Sephora. I paid, I think, $19 in the sale. It's not even really worth that. I mean, it's a good runny, gentle gel cleanser but I wouldn't say that it is worth that price but the one thing that I would say that's pretty notable about it that I really do like is it smells like rose and I say that very carefully I am not usually a fan of the rose scent because I feel like it's often just too overpowering and a little bit on the artificial side this one actually smells like you're standing in the middle of of a rose garden and you can actually smell not only the nice fragrance in the air of the roses but also like the earthiness of it so they really really nailed it with the rose fragrance in this cleanser so that's what i think is the most amazing about it but i still don't think it's really worth the price tag very very good cleanser though the next thing that i tried is the neon and co hair and scalp mask this is a hair mask this this brand had been in I think almost every FabFitFun sale I'd ever shopped up until maybe a sale or two ago. So I don't know if maybe they're phasing them out, but they'll probably show up again. And I just really wanted to try something from them once and for all. I hadn't from the beginning because they're just not a brand that you see a lot of product reviews on at all still. Well, I don't know about still, but pretty much the whole time I would see them available in sales. So I finally just picked this one up. I saw a couple of people say some good things about it. I am using it now it's nothing special it feels like kind of a better version of a conditioner I don't feel like it does anything really for my hair you can see I've used about half of it the smell reminds me of like pink lemonade so I actually really do like the smell but as, as far as the hair mask goes there's just better out there so next this one's an empty this is grown alchemist purifying body exfoliant pearl peppermint and elong elong i finally finished this up this you don't need to get this i wouldn't even really recommend it if i could go back i wouldn't have purchased it i like a lot of grown alchemist products they're an australian company they're botanical they're sustainable cruelty free all of those things that i really love in a brand and I really do like a lot of their products, but I don't, they're not all slam dunks for me. Some people say that they love anything from Grown Alchemist. You know, some people are just brand loyal like that. I didn't really like this. I used it to use it up. It's finally gone, thankfully. It smells a little bit like peppermint. I have seen other people criticize this and one person said they thought it smelled like mothballs, which I don't really know what mothballs smell like, which maybe I should get them because I have moth holes in some of my clothes. So I wouldn't recommend this. Pass, pass on this one. This, I, had dug up this is actually this is kind of similar to the shawnee darden packing okay so this is freck so jelly cactus eye jelly with plant collagen and this is surprisingly great to use it is there's so much product in here too this is an eye cream basically and it has 1.35 ounces i don't remember what i paid i want to say it was like 11 dollars or something along those lines and i Remember when the Freck stuff showed up in a sale, people were freaking out, really excited, so I kind of jumped on the bandwagon and I didn't have an eye cream at the time. Since then, I've kind of decided like that eye creams are just another thing for people to sell to us, and so I had stopped really using eye creams or looking out for them or wanting to buy them, but I stumbled on this. I just recently went through a huge move and I unpacked my beauty products that had been in storage. Some went bad, but this one didn't because it hadn't been opened and so I have been using it lately it is extremely cooling on the eye okay, they're cruelty free and vegan and I really have been enjoying this eye cream it's kind of like a consistency of half cream half 
gel. It's really, really, really nice. Maybe there's aloe in it or something. The ingredients aren't on the back here. They were probably on the box. That really bothers me. I wish they put ingredients on the packaging as well because you throw the box away and then it's just gone. I guess there's always the internet these days. But So I really like this. I like it. I like it. I recommend it. My baby's sleeping. <laughs> Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is this Dry Bar Prep Rally Prime and Prep Detangler. I have been using this lately. I got this in a box maybe a year ago and I hadn't really needed it. My hair has changed a lot since having a baby. It's falling out, which I didn't know about. Nobody told me that my hair would fall out in clumps. It is finally stopping, but I can show you. See that? You see that? Oh my gosh. Uh, but anyway, he's about to be six months old and apparently that's around when it starts to grow back but holy cow it fell out it really fell out it was alarming and distressing and it's stopping so that's good so when my hair texture and thickness has changed and also my baby's very grabby and so I cannot wear my hair down I basically can't wear my hair down at all these days so I have to twist it in a bun and it turns into a rat's nest by the time I wash it. I wait two or three days to wash it because it's constantly twisted in a bun. It just kind of becomes one big knot. So I'm using this to detangle it. I have been using this for a couple of months now, ever since this is a thing for me in my life right now. And it really, really helps. I spray it on and then I squish it in and then I leave it for about 30 seconds and then it makes my life so much easier combing out my hair. I've never really needed detangler that much until now and now that I need it and I've been using this, this is a wonderful product. I can see why some people were after it. I see on like the Facebook buy sell trade board, a lot of people are looking for this and I can see why it's good stuff. It really, really helps. It also, which I didn't realize until right now, it's also heat protectant. So that's why I think it's called Prep Rally also because it's not only a detangler, you can prep your hair to be styled. So it also protects up to 450 degrees. I didn't realize that. I had just been using it as a detangler. So this was something that had just been in my stash that I got out lately to use and it's great. I love it. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the AG Hair Care Fast Food Leave-On Conditioner. I already knew about this before it became available through FabFitFun. So this is an empty. I had already purchased it beforehand. You can get it in Ulta. It has like four and a half stars in Ulta. It's a wonderful leave-in conditioner for me with curly hair. I like leave-in conditioners. I like styling creams better to get my curls defined, but I like leave-in conditioners to make my hair feel soft. I just always, once my hair is dried, I always have a layer of frizz, no matter how good the leave-in conditioner is on my hair. So I need like a second product once my hair is dried to deal with a layer of frizz. And it is no different with this one, but this one, when I use it, my hair is incredibly soft after I use it. I like it a lot. I do recommend it. The one thing about it is the smell is okay. There's something about it that reminds me a little bit of cough syrup. So it doesn't have the greatest smell, but it's not the worst. You can deal with it for how good this is. Also, they donate a part of their proceeds to One Girl Can, which provides scholarships for girls in Africa. So that's awesome too. The next product I have here is another Grown Alchemist product. This is the Grown Alchemist Intensive Body Cream Rosa Domacena Acai and Pomegranate. It. They often have uh, ingredients that I cannot pronounce and I've never heard of before, but this I actually scored at a TJ Maxx and it happened to be available in the last sale. As far as a body cream goes, I do find this to be very moisturizing. It's not greasy. That's something people often like to hear, whether or not something's greasy. I don't really mind greasy body creams and lotions that take a long time to absorb. I feel like those are extra moisturizing for me and as long as I know it, I can just give it more time to sit on my body. I'm digressing a little bit. So I do like this a lot. The smell is very, very musky, I would say. It doesn't really smell like roses, but it smells a little bit like roses, but there's something very musky about it to me. I don't really smell like any acai or pomegranate in it. So definitely if you're not into musky scents, I would steer clear of this. But if you do like kind of a spicy, rose fragrance I guess is how I would describe
describe it. This could be for you, and it is a really, really good body cream. Like I said, I do think it's moisturizing. So that is that. This is the Kate Somerville Exfoliate. This is a very, oh, that's upside down. This is a very well-loved exfoliator. In comparison to the Grown Alchemist, which this is a Grown Alchemist product that I really, really love, the Grown Alchemist Exfoliator, that one, the one that's the physical exfoliator, that one is one of my favorite face products I've used of all time, not just exfoliator. I love that one. That smells a little bit like patchouli, so that one's very musky as well, but I love that one. If it's in sales, I max out on it. So in comparison to that one, I don't like this. This is okay. This is a really, really well-loved one though. So I'm kind of alone in that opinion. You can probably see that. It's green in color. It's Kind of, I would describe it like a weak clay. It's not like clay mask, but that's kind of what it looks like, you can see. And it has very fine granules, kind of like if you've ever used one that uses cranberry seeds as the exfoliator, that is what it feels like. Very, very fine and a lot of them. And it smells a little bit like nutmeg. There's like a a spice to it that it smells like kind of cinnamony and nutmeggy. So that's fine. The way it feels using it, it's a very intense exfoliator. And I believe, I don't think this one has the ingredients on the back either. I'll put it across the screen, but I believe not only does it have the physical exfoliation, I believe it also has chemical ex exfoliation. I do know that I have read that a couple of people have experienced redness and irritation after using this because it is a pretty intense exfoliator. I don't love using it. I don't feel like it makes my skin feel all that great after using it. And it's not for me, but people really do like this. I'm a little bit in the minority on that one. That's my opinion though on the exfoliate. Finally got to use it. This was a freebie if you spent over a certain amount of money in a sale like six months ago or something. So I was excited to finally get a chance to try it. I don't tend to buy Kate Zomerville products because I try my best to steer clear of anything that's not cruelty free and any brand that's owned by a company that's not cruelty free. So while Kate Somerville is cruelty free, they're owned by Estee Lauder. And according to the resource I check, Estee Lauder is not considered cruelty free. It also depends on what resource you use to find out if something's cruelty free. Being cruelty free, there's a lot of layers to it, a lot of nuances, and really you can just do your best, right? Next, I'm gonna talk about this toothpaste. This is the, a lot of the products I have are like really hard to read the what it is. So this is the David's Premium Natural Toothpaste. This is fluoride free and sulfite free, and it is in the peppermint flavor. And I got this in one of the mega mystery bundles, which is the last time I will ever buy a mystery bundle. I have purchased, no, I bought one since then. I've purchased three mystery bundles since I have been a member and I just, I don't recommend them. I, for me, they've been flops. I've seen some people get some really awesome stuff in mystery bundles, but not me, not me. I didn't like any of them. So this is one thing I got in a mystery bundle and I'm just using it to use it because it's toothpaste. It feels like I need a lot to do one brushing, which is fine. It doesn't feel like it's quite as cleansing for my mouth as like Crest or Colgate or whatever it is I typically use. And it it works okay, it works okay. If you have an aversion to fluoride, I think the idea is that fluoride can be bad for you. I read a little bit about it when I saw that this was a thing. And what I read is that yeah, fluoride can be bad for you, but you really wanna worry about it if you find out that it's in your drinking water. I don't know that it's such a bad thing if we use it to clean our teeth and we're not really ingesting any or much of it at all. But maybe it could turn out that fluoride is really, really bad to use to clean our teeth. Who knows, there's still so much we don't know about the things that we use on our bodies. It's pretty scary. Anyway, so this was this is okay. And if you're looking for a natural toothpaste, I would say this would be one to try. Just note that, like I said, you need a lot of it to feel like you're really getting your teeth clean. Next, I want to talk about the Spongel hand cream. This is the Coconut Verbena hand cream from Spongel or Spongelli. I'm not sure how to say it. I've heard Spongelli and that kind of makes sense because there's an accent over the E. But this is infused with shea butter, macadamia 
aniseed oil and argan oil and I do think that this is a good hand cream also not greasy I am really partial to the hand cream from Trader Joe's it's like $4.99 and it is a really sizable tube and it lasts a long time so that so far is like my baseline for hand creams I love that hand cream this one is good and I think it just smells really really sweet like sweet sugary but I put it on the other night and my husband walked into the room and he said oh it smells like coconut so apparently it really does smell like coconut there's a sweetness to it though that I feel overwhelms the coconut when I use it and I put it on my hands which is fine it's a good sweetness it's just it's quite strong though it's quite strong but it's good hand cream I do like it next I want to talk about these Ofra lippies I am not gonna put them on my lips but I'll swatch them on my arms for you okay I need to do a video on like all of my liquid lips. I love lip colors. I love long lasting liquid lipsticks. My favorite, favorite makeup product. Well, that and mascara. I don't know if I could choose between the two. I think I might pick mascara over a lip color. Oh, that's a hard decision. I'm not gonna force myself to do that right now. I don't like these. I wanted to love them. People love these. This is also something that I'm in the minority in, like with the exfoliate. So as far as their wearability, I'll talk about the colors afterward, but as far as their wearability, these are supposed to be long lasting. And to me, a long lasting liquid lip should survive a meal if there's no oil in the meal. If there's oil, okay, fine. You might need to reapply. But if there's no oil on the meal, this should last a meal. Maybe not eating an apple, but it should last like a salad, as long as you don't have an oily dressing. You know what I mean. But these don't, and I put them on, and I have a snack, and I drink some water, and then I look in the mirror, and most of it's gone. Just there's like a little bit on the top, and it's all gone from the center. So that's really annoying. I also didn't like the colors. So let's see, this one is Cocos Island, regular go foot applicator, very salmon pinky. You can see it goes on really well, really pigmented. So that's Cocos Island. This one I think is one of the ones that I find to be okay on my skin. So, and of course the colors are just gonna be a matter of preference. I'm just showing you the colors right now, but I didn't like them on myself. This one is called Rio. This one I think is an okay color as well. Actually, I think this was my favorite color of the three. And then this one's like a shimmery metallic. It's called Aruba. I really was on the fence about getting these and I should have just listened to my gut. I had a feeling I wouldn't like them for some reason. So you can see the metallic shimmer of that one. So on my hand, it looks like they should be good colors and they're very, very subtle when I wear them, but they just don't go too well on my skin. I don't feel, sometimes I think that and then I'll revisit a lipstick and I'll put it on and I'll be like, oh, I actually kind of like this on me now. So I can be fickle in that way. But as far as the formula is concerned, I just wish they last longer. I don't think that these last long enough to be considered a long lasting liquid lip. I don't. That said, I am holding it up against things like the Maybelline Matte Ink, which you have to like say a prayer before you try to wash it off of your lips. It is really hard to get off, but I love that about it. I love it. This is in the shade Lover and I purchased it before I went cruelty free, but I love the formula so much that I will be sad when I run out. Next, I have the Real Complexion Hyaluron Moisture Cream from Hand Skin. So this is the same company that makes the Hyaluron Acid Essence that I really, really like. I've talked about it so many times on my channel. I was looking to see if I happen to have it here. I don't. It's in the bathroom. I like this a lot. It is a very cooling actually, kind of like I was talking about how the Freck is cooling. It has this, that same kind of property, a little bit like gel-like as well. So I wonder what kind of similar ingredients they might have to give it that quality. This has a bunch of silicones. I don't know about, about a bunch, but at least two in the first handful of ingredients, which I don't like silicones in my nighttime skincare routine, personal choice. And if you do use it, I highly recommend using it only in your last step, only using a product with silicones in it in your last step of your skincare routine at night, if you're using it. Silicones, I do feel like have a place in the morning, especially if you are going to be using any kind of foundation or anything like that, because they can serve as primers. So I tried it as a primer and it peeled up so 
badly, at least under the particular foundation that I tried it under. So that was a no-go. So my impression is that it feels really, really nice to use as a moisturizer. So I'm struggling to find a place for this in my routine. I suppose I could just use it in the morning. I don't wear foundation frequently at all, so I could just use it in the morning. But it is good though. It feels good. I feel like I can find something that I can use this for. So that's it. If you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. Introduce yourself in the comments below. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!